Hey guys, Mr. Dean here, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about still life compositions. So a still life is just an arrangement of ordinary objects that are set up for an artist to draw. Now what makes these objects look a little bit more extraordinary is how the artist frames them in his work. So before ever starting your work of art, it's good to think about how your overall composition on your page, how you arrange those objects and how you draw them is going to look. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna give you guys some really good tips. The rule of thirds is a very well-known rule that applies to most, if not all, of the visual arts. But overall, this rule can be broken down into two main things for artists to consider. First, the rule of thirds tells us that if we divide the scene into a grid like this, it splits the image into three main vertical areas and three main horizontal areas. The rule of thirds tells us that our eyes are naturally drawn to where each of these grid lines intersect. In other words, these areas are great focal points, and when objects are placed in line with them, they tend to look more interesting to viewers. Secondly, the rule of thirds also suggests that any horizon line or main flat surface in your drawing should line up with one of the horizontal grid lines. Doing this will help keep you from placing your horizon directly at the center of your drawing, which is the least interesting area to have a horizon, and is something beginning artists tend to do naturally until taught otherwise. You can also apply this rule to the vertical lines, making sure that any tall objects in your composition line up with one of the vertical grid lines. The rule of odds is a very simple rule that basically just suggests that an odd number of objects is more appealing than an even number of objects. Now how you apply this to your art is up to you, but basically this rule is trying to keep you from making your composition too symmetrical because a little bit of asymmetry is a lot more appealing to the eye. The rule of odds doesn't necessarily mean that your composition should only ever have an odd number of objects in it. Instead, it may also suggest grouping objects into odd numbered selections. For example, if you have four objects in your composition, it may be more visually appealing to group three of them together on one side of your composition and isolate the fourth somewhere on the other side. Again, this adds more interest to your artwork by keeping your overall composition from appearing too symmetrical. One of the most important things to consider when creating a good composition is space. A common mistake beginning artists make is trying to make sure that all the objects fit perfectly on their paper. However, this usually ends up making the objects too small for a good composition. Instead of thinking about how you can fit all of your objects in your artwork, think about how you can have your objects fill the space. This may mean that some of the objects are slightly cropped out of the final image. However, because they fill most of the space, they become the clear objects of interest in your drawing. One way to decide how you want your objects to fill the space on your paper is to use a viewfinder or your fingers to visually frame the scene ahead of time. Another important thing to consider when creating an appealing composition are leading lines. Leading lines are the implied lines in your composition that lead the viewer's eye around your work of art. They can also be used to direct viewers to a main object of focus in your work. In a still life, 
Most of the leading lines come from the outer edges of your objects. However, they can also be created by controlling the light and shadow in your setup, or even by adding a linear object like rope that leads you around the drawing. As artists, it's important that we are aware of where the leading lines in a piece are placing the viewer's focus. You need to know ahead of time if your goal is to highlight an important object or if it's instead to lead the viewer around your work of art, noticing many different objects along the way. Jumping back a little bit to when we discussed the importance of cropping your images so that the objects of interest fill most of the space in your artwork, this next tip is about cropping your image so that two or more of those objects run off or touch the side of your drawing. Running your shapes off two or three sides helps create rhythm and movement while further helping you make sure that your objects are large enough to fill the space. Creating the perfect composition isn't a perfect science. And at the end of the day, what's appealing to some might not be appealing to you. There are also many other things artists must consider when creating a work of art, such as texture, color, contrast, and more. However, keeping these tips in mind while drawing can help you form a better eye for creating all manner of future compositions.